guys, this is Kazi. Welcome to another epic tutorial, Knives Out. I just watched the film two days ago and it was borderline distracting. It was just so good the way it looked and the way it was lit. Uh, Steve Yedlin killed it. He was the cinematographer on this and the photo cam team and the color science that they put behind their movies is just, it's second to none. I mean, think of Tenet that's coming out with Christopher Nolan. Think of Dunkirk. Think of Joker, they were part of that. And once you start picking up the pattern, what they're doing, you're gonna start noticing which movies are done by Photochem. So guys, this is the one thing that I wanna talk about. When I'm recreating these looks, never have I ever said to you guys that, hey, this is how it was achieved and that's what they did. I mean, these companies put a lot of money behind research and development. They develop their own film emulations and they are just, they're color scientists. I mean, they're doing things that we don't even know about and that's the edge that Photochem has over some other company and then company three has over some other companies and you got Technicolor and each one has their own built-in look and DNA that we feel when we watch a movie and then we do our research and we figure out, okay, it was done by this uh, post-production facility or whatever have you. So always keep that in mind, okay? What I'm showing you here is for all the other 99.9% .9 of the people in the world that are working, you know, that don't have the backing to send their work to finish in Photocam or something like that. So what can you do? And this is the premise of this channel and whatever I'm here to teach, okay? I'm not even using anything outside of Resolve. I wanna keep it as tight as possible so anyone around the world can apply these techniques and then get similar results, okay? Once again, just remember the keyword similar results. That said, I want everybody to pause this video right now and drop in a comment and tell me which camera do you think this footage is shot with that we're gonna be recreating and mimicking the look from Knives Out. Knives Out, when I watched it first, I thought it was shot on film. I was 100% positive that it was shot on film. Then when I did my digging, I realized that it was shot on Alexa 65, which is the same camera used on Joker. It's a large format camera, true 65 millimeter camera. This camera is so rad that you cannot even purchase it. This is rental only. So I don't even wanna know how much it costs, but when you find out the footage that I'm working with, which camera that was shot with, it's gonna blow your freaking mind for the price and what we're gonna be able to achieve. So that's gonna unshackle, you know, that thing in your brain that says, I need to be working with Red or Alexas to get that caliber of work. You're gonna be surprised. Are you guys super pumped? And for those that wanna level up their color grading game, check out the link in the description. One hour long free training where I will show you how to get the perfect skin tones out of your Sony S Log 8 bit footage, how to get the clean white look. It's the go to commercial look. How to get the creamy film look. How to fix the dreaded gamma shift and much, much more. Link is in the description. Guys, you know, if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button. The only way for these videos and this channel to blow the F up, I need your help. Go smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Follow me on Instagram. You know, I'm dropping value bombs there every single day. Let's roll the intro. All right, let's get this show on the road. Let's just start off with our color palette so we can study it better and try to understand what is really going on. So I'm going to make this bigger, push this over for a second and just look at it, how rich this image is. And obviously tons is going on with the art direction and that has a lot to do with it, but you can still see the richness of this image. And that's the beauty of Photochem. Their process is just second to none. So this is what we got. And let's just bring our scopes back and see what we got to work with. And here's our shot. This is filmed on GH5. So guys, we're going from Alexa 65, which I don't even think you can buy. It's rental only. The camera is so freaking expensive. It's a large format camera. And then here, you got a camera that you can pick up on eBay for less than $1,000. And uh, the flicker and all that stuff that's going on, we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna show you a cool technique to take care of that, but this is what we got. So let me pick my hero frame. I'm gonna park it somewhere around here. Let's say this is our hero frame. Um, let's start building out our node tree 
and then we'll go from there, okay? So this does not require noise reduction, so I'm not even gonna dedicate a node for that. So first one is gonna be my just regular exposure. The second node is gonna be our creative LUT. So creative LUT, this is where we're gonna achieve that film look. And uh, then we're gonna create a background node, and then I'm gonna be using layer mixer this time, and then this one is gonna be my skin. And then I'm gonna create another layer mixer and this one is going to be my highlights. I'm just gonna call it high. And then this one is gonna be our look adjustment. I'm gonna have about three more guys that I'm gonna play with. So I'm just gonna keep them here. I'm not gonna name them right now. And then obviously we're gonna have our sharpening. I'm gonna have my grain and I'm gonna have my D flicker. So that's the structure, okay? This is what we're gonna be working with. Let's just bring it up and keep it somewhere around here. So first things first, I'm gonna be using Resolve's own LUT. That way I'm not using something that you guys don't have. So film looks are part of Resolve's LUT package, okay? So it should be in there. And the one that we're gonna be using is gonna be the 2383 uh, D65. And as you go, uh, lower in numbers, D60, D55, it gets warmer. So we're gonna be using the one where we get somewhat of a neutral image. So I'm gonna drop that on and already you see it looks super film-like, right? Just printed, we're done. <laughs> there is uh, quite a bit that needs to be done, but this is a good starting point. So let's just go back in here, knives out and pull up our image and you guys know what we're gonna do, click right here, and then selected still images. That's what we wanna do. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna push this over a little bit so you guys can see clearly what's going on. And hopefully we can still see our nodes. Yep, we do. So see, we're pretty far apart. You can see it in the scopes what's happening. So we got quite a ways to go, okay? Um, not on my hero frame, so I'm gonna park it somewhere around here. So obviously, like I said, we don't have to worry about this red that much. We don't have that red in here, so we don't have to worry about it. We're gonna have to nail this. We got these stones here. We have to nail the skin, which is not gonna be a problem. We're gonna make sure that we keep the shirt neutral, just like how his blue is true blue and his white is true white. So we're gonna keep this um, you know, as is, and then uh, we're just gonna go from there. And we can see the highlights have a little cool tones because this is the window light that's coming through. So that's what's creating like a, you know, light blue color in the highlights. And we're gonna try to do the same thing here. Although our lights are completely different and it shouldn't be that, but we're just gonna try to get it in that world, okay? That's what we got going on. So I'm gonna go in my skin tone. One thing that you need to know about Layer Mixer is that anything that's underneath takes precedent, meaning if I don't turn this off, nothing is gonna happen here. I can prove it to you. See what I mean? Nothing is happening because basically you can see it in the node that things are happening, but because this is still activated, it's not gonna affect anything. So once I turn this off, all of a sudden we see what's happening here. So this is how the Layer Mixer works, okay? The bottom one takes precedent over the top one. So. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my dude's skin. So let's go in here and I'm just gonna click right here, do qualifier and just grab his skin from here. That's okay. I'm gonna open it up a little bit and then let's move it around. This is pretty good. I'm gonna control it quite a bit. So just wanna keep it somewhere around here, move it around, keep it clean. Okay, so that's not bad. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make the D, just denoise it around here. And now this is what you need to do, okay? You need to restrict it. So we're gonna keep it somewhere around here uh, like that. And then obviously give it a shape, turn it around a little bit, and then feather it out, something like that. And now we have a pretty good key that we can do whatever with, okay? So I'm gonna go back in here, make it bigger, and now we can start dialing in our colors for the skin. Okay, so what I need to do is I'm gonna start with my gamma right here, and I'm gonna start giving it this brownish red. So I'm gonna start going in that world, like you can see it. We're giving it that rich skin, and then we're gonna counter it with my gain to start adding some of these cool tones. 
So I'm going to go in the opposite direction to start adding some of these cool tones. And you can see that it's giving us close to that skin. So before and after, big difference, right? So much more life. So I'm going to keep it somewhere around here for now. That's okay. I'm going to keep it here. And now I want to go in my background and start getting our deep blacks that we see here. And that's going to be pretty easy because it's basically going to not touch what we selected here and then affect everything else. And that's exactly what we want to do. I'm going to go under my log wheels in my shadow and I'm going to pull it down. See, all of a sudden we're getting that deep blacks that we see here. This is already looking so good. So I'm going to leave it somewhere around here. This is looking pretty good. This is fine. And then here, I'm going to go back in here in my highlights and let's just do our classic. I'm going to do shift H so you guys can see what I'm grabbing and I'm going to get somewhere around here. I just want to grab these specular highlights. And now what can I do to restrict these so it doesn't grab this? It's pretty simple. Let's kill the saturated areas. So if I bring this down, it's going to get rid of all of that and it's only going to select the skin. So see, work smart, don't work too hard. And then I'm going to go back in denoise and just bring it around 10-ish. And now we grab that area right there. And all I want to do here is I want to go in my offset and I want to start bringing some of these cool tones. So I'm going to just see if I do before and after, let me just make it bigger so you guys can see this. See, so if I do, I'm actually going to go closer so you guys can really see it. If I do before, see this warm skin tones and now we're bringing in these cool highlights in there and that's getting us closer to what we got going on right there. So we can even push it a little bit more. Be very gentle. So before, after, right? So it's really creating that believable white light. And that's the point of it. You want to create this look in a way where it doesn't look forced. Okay. So already looking really, really good. Okay. Where we started to where we are. I mean, we're coming a long way. Now in my look adjustment, what I want to do is I want to do some heavy push and pull. Okay. What I mean by that is I'm going to go in my lift gamma again and really start pushing colors to start getting these neutral tones along with like tons of separation. Cause like right now, everything is living in this warm world. Whereas here, everything lives where it's supposed to be uh, the best way that I can describe it. So let's try to start doing that. So I'm going to take my lift and I'm going to start taking it somewhere around here. I'm going to take my gamma and I'm going to start bringing in that warmth. And right now I'm just focusing on the wood to wood. I'm trying to go in that direction. And then I'm going to take my gain and I'm going to start bringing a lot of cool tones. And if I do before and after, we're creating a lot of separation now. So you can already see like even how this is splitting up from the background now. So that's the whole point of it, right? So I'm going to I'm going to keep going, but not too much. And my gain. I mean, obviously go too far and then try to make it, you know, bring it back. So what I see here is that this is looking pretty good. This is actually looking really good. Like skin is kind of off, but everything else is looking pretty good. And now, now what I want to do is just go in my gamma and kind of compensate for the skin. So if I do before and after, just look at the kind of separation that we're creating. Like, really. Just look at this, to this, how much we're separating the background and everything. And even if you look at this color, like it's really starting to come in, okay, quite a bit. So look adjustment wise, this is where I'm going to park it for now. And what I want to do is I want to go back in my skin and just kind of add some richness in there again, okay? So I'm just going to take my gamma 
and start moving around. Now, if I do before and after, like, look how much the skin node is doing. Unreal. I'm going to park it here for now. And then I want to go in here and start bringing down some colors and then bring up some colors. So let's start with hue versus options. I'm going to go under my hue versus hue and take my reds and start moving it around. And we're going to start seeing what's happening, right? So basically, I'm just looking at this wood and I'm trying to get it in that world. And it's kind of getting there, right? And I'm not really worried about the skin because we have our skin pulled out. So we can always go in there and fix it. Or even better, we can just grab this, send it through and say, hey, don't affect the skin, just affect everything else. So I can just go invert it. Then that way we don't even have to do any manual labor. Like now we're affecting everything around it, but not the skin. Now I want to go back in there, hue versus hue and mess with my yellows. And that's going to be a big one because... I'm just looking at this and this, like these colors, and I'm just trying to get this and that in that space. And I think we already did it. So if I turn it off, see where it is. And then if I bring it back, so you can see we're adding a really nice warmth. Now, if I turn it off and on, you can see the difference, how big of a difference we're making. I mean, look at the wood before and then look at it after. It has that red in there now. And then look at the lights. They're looking so much better. and even. This right here is looking so much better. Let's say that you like that gold because it has some of this in here and you want to keep it. That's not a problem at all because what you can do is you can just go in here. You can do a couple of things. You can either restrict it. Let me show you that technique too. So what we can do is we can go in here in the picker, pick this, and now it tells us that this is where that color is. So I can come in here and basically bring it back to zero. So it leaves that color alone, and then it still goes in and manipulates the lights a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. It brings a little bit of the red in the lights, but then it leaves this as is, okay? If that's the kind of thing that you want to do. We still made a lot of changes. We still got that red in the wood, and it's looking believable. Everything is looking really, really good. Now I want to go in here. Let's do hue versus saturation. First thing is to just grab it from here and just move it around and see what's happening, right? So I can go and bring the saturation up and like, let's see if that's the option that we want to go with. I don't think so. So I'm going to keep it. Bringing it down, like takes the edge off a little bit, to be honest with you. And then once again, we can send that information through and say, don't affect my skin, just affect everything else. So then that way the skin stays pretty rich, but then it brings down the saturation on everything around it. So actually we're getting closer. If you look at this to that, we're kind of getting closer. So I don't mind that. I'm going to keep it there. Okay. Now, what else I want to do I'm going to go to my next node and here what I want to show you is we're going to go under our hue versus luminance. And now that's a big one because one thing that separates film from digital is that there's so much depth in colors and that depth comes from having control over your hue versus luminance. Let me explain. I'm going to grab my reds and I'm going to pull it down and just look at his skin and look at the environment around and how close we're going to start getting to this. Uh, skin tone. Okay, so I'm going to grab this and I'm going to start pulling it down. Okay. I'm not going to pull it down too much, but I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. Just look at this, how even and how rich the skin gets. Like these are the deep colors. I mean, look at this. The like right there to here. These are the deep colors that makes film look like film. Now, if I make this bigger and you see it, like just look at the depth we're adding just boom before after the saturated colors but in a different way it's not just cranking the saturation just look at the skin okay so this thing is freaking magic now you can try it with other ones too but i think the red is the most prominent one for here but i can just show you what yellow does but obviously i don't think we need that we 
yeah, we don't certainly need that at all. So I'm going to keep that there. As a matter of fact, let's raise this because, I mean, it's up to you, but for me, raising it gives us this specular highlights in the back and it actually does not ruin it. I think it helps, to be honest with you. It just adds more drama into the image. I personally would leave it like that. It just adds like a three dimension to this image. And one more thing that I want to do, let me look at the contrast and see if we're nailing it. I think we can do more with the contrast, okay? I actually think we can do more with the contrast. So what I want to do is I'm going to create another layer right here. And you know, I'm creating these layers. All this can be done in one. I'm just doing this so I can break it up for you guys so you can follow along what is happening in each one. But obviously, this hue versus options can all be in one node. And that's totally fine. As a matter of fact, if I'm working on a professional project, that's what I would do. But I just, because this is sort of a complex grade, I want to break it up so it makes sense to you what is really happening. And then this one, consider this one as our global adjustment, okay? So this one is our global adjustment. And what I want to do is I'm going to raise this and I'm going to go on my RGB curves. And um, I'm going to raise it up just a tiny bit, not too much, just a tiny bit. And then maybe a little bit. And then I'm going to pull this down. Something like that. Let me see what it's doing. And I'm going to grab it from the top. And then I'm going to ease it out a little bit. Okay. Let me think about this because I think there's some really deep blacks here and we didn't have those. So I think this might be doing it. And I'm going to leave it on. And then I'm going to go in my log wheels and I'm going to try to even out the blue channel, right? The blue channel is a little lifted compared to like where the blue channel is here. So I'm going to, I'm going to even that out. I'm going to bring that down. somewhere around here and now I'm going to turn it on and off and I think it's a little bit more even right so let's do this I'm going to do this all right so this image is way more saturated so we're going to have to bring the saturation down So one thing that I'm going to try, I'm going to go back in this layer and I'm going to show you this technique. It's pretty cool. So saturation versus saturation. Sometimes you can just come in here on the top end and pull it down a little bit, not too much. And you see how it takes the sting off. I mean, this does not look bad at all. Like this is how it was before. This is how it is afterwards. So, I mean, you can obviously split the difference. But this does wonders. I mean, just look at it. And sometimes the best strategy is to kind of pull back and look at it like what's happening. You really get to see if you're getting colder or if you're getting in that world. I would want to go back into my look adjustment and just mess with some of these parameters a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to go back in my gamma and pull it down. Go in my lift and level it out. And then gain, bring it down. Okay. All right, that's not bad at all. I'm going to go back in my skin and just work on it a little bit because I want to bring some more warmth. All right, and I'm going to go back in here and just go in my hue versus saturation this time and just try to bring 
my I'm going to bring my red down quite a bit and then obviously pull it up. And then I'm going to try to do the same thing with yellow. I mean, this node really makes it look like film. It does wonders. Okay, so I'm liking where we're going, okay? So let's do one-to-one. -one. Let's look at the wood, do like where our wood is. It's really good. I mean, it does a lot. Let me see if I can even push it a little bit more. I'm going to grab it from here. So if I do before and after, and look at that wood, like see how brown that is, and now it's getting so red. So that does quite a bit. The skin is looking pretty good. I guess what we can do is maybe bring a little bit of a warmth back. So I'm just gonna go in my gain and kind of split the difference. So that's what I just did. And let's go in our sharpen and obviously like we got to sharpen it up quite a bit because this image is so sharp. I mean, just look at it. So we want to make sure that this does that too. And it does now. And then we're going to go in our grain. I'm going to drop that in the usual suspect. I'm going to go to 35 millimeter and then I'm just really going to crank it because there's so much grain here and it's so nice. I'm going to make it even push it even more. And you guys can see if I get pretty close that the grain is doing its thing. If I do before and after, you guys can see it. Okay. And then D flicker, obviously we're going to go in here. I'm going to type in D flicker and then just drop that in and you don't even have to do anything. It's just going to take care of it. And it's going to take a minute to render. If I go here, you guys are going to see what's happening. So I've gone in my playback and turned on uh, my render cache to smart. So look, this blue line is basically rendering this image. And once it goes through the entire thing, it'll be ready uh, for a playback without any drop frames. All right, so let's play it through. All right, so can you guys believe that this is a freaking uh, footage shot with a $1,000 camera GH5 and what we created? So I'm going to hide this. I'm going to bring in this image. And sometimes it's good to just go back and forth and read it. I mean, guys, come on. Um, not having the fancy color science, not having all the best color scientists in the world behind you, helping you out, creating your unreal show LUTs like we started with what we got in Resolve, and this is what we ended up with. So I personally think that our image is still kind of too saturated. So I'm going to do a few things, but let's turn these two off first so we can move freely. And uh, let's just go into our global adjustment and create another node so we can just like really mess around with it and see what's happening and what we need to do. So. This image is so saturated, but then in the shadows, it might not be so saturated. So whereas my shadows are really saturated. So one technique that I'm going to show you is that let's just in this note, create another note so we can mess around with it. Go under your luminance versus saturation and just pull it from your shadows. So this right here is your dark parts and then, you know, bright parts. So I'm going to grab it from here and I'm going to pull it down a little bit. And basically, I'm just focusing on his lips. I'm going to try to get the lips in the same world. And I'm going to park it somewhere around here. So now if I do before and after, and obviously you can just grab it from the middle point and then bring it back so it gets saturated where it's supposed to be saturated. But this is going to be such a little nuance that you really need to focus on certain areas to see if it's making a difference or not but like if we get really close to the hair you can see it like in here you can see it that it just makes such a subtle difference that it's barely there i mean let's just even Push it a little bit so we can see what it's really doing. 
it is a very subtle difference, but gives it a very much of a film look. Look at that. These are the little nuances, and this is the kind of stuff that you have to do to really get the look that you want. And if I turn it on and off, honestly, I can live with either or. I'm like really, really nitpicking at this point. I feel like I like everything that it does minus what it does to my skin because I still want some of that saturation back. I'm going to go in my gamma and I'm going to try to bring it back. I'm going to go in here and try to bring some of that back, not too much. So now if we go back in here, what we did, yep. I want to leave it in. I think it really cleans it up. I think it really adds to the film look. Yeah, the skin is looking really good. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and turn everything off and then go one by one where we started to where we ended up. Don't forget, this is shot on GH5. So we started with our creative LUT, which was the 2383 D65. And then we went in and pulled the skin worked on our background to like really bring the shadows down and uh, and then added some warmth in the highlights. Look adjustment did quite a bit. And then that's where the nuance started happening. We did a lot of hue versus options to just clean up everything. And then hue versus luminance was a big one to give us that film look and even out his skin. And then in the global adjustment, we just got rid of the blue hue that we had in the shadows and just evened out everything else. And then went in and uh, used our luminance versus saturation to really clean up the shadows even more to keep the look pristine. Added sharpening, grain, de flicker. And this is our final look. I mean, let's just check it out in full screen. I hope you guys had a blast and come on, a thousand dollar camera. You can pick up GH5 for less than a grand if you're pretty savvy like myself. So we created this look with the GH5. People who say the dynamic range on GH5 is terrible. The V-Log is terrible. The noise is terrible. I mean, come on, just look at this. What we were able to create without using any third party plugins, without using any photo chem magic. So sky's the limit. Keep that attitude, work hard, get obsessed, get possessed. Make sure to check out the link to the training in the description if you want to jumpstart your career in color grading or just want to blow up as a filmmaker. Smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, and I will see you in the next video.